Okay, fo folks, I think we're ready to start. Um, so welcome to the uh, end of year uh, ceremony for 2016. Um, so uh, to begin, um, first let's start with a moment of silence to reflect on the tragedy that has happened at UCLA this week. Uh, if you haven't heard, a student who graduated with a PhD at UCLA uh, several years ago shot and killed his advisor at UCLA uh, and then shot and killed himself. Uh, it's a truly tragic and heartbreaking story. Uh, so please join me in a moment of silence to reflect on this tragic event and think about the families of the people who have died. All right. Thank you for joining me in that moment of silence. So now um, let's move on to the, to the ceremony. So this event has gotten so big that we, we now have an outline, <laughs> otherwise known as a, a schedule. Uh, so I'm going to start at 11.30 with the chair farewell and welcome. Um, then at noon, we're going to do student awards. We're already starting a little bit late, so, you know, this is approximate times. Um, then 12.45, the barbecue, and then at 4, um, there'll be the CSC 125 game demos um, that Jeff is going to be leading. That'll be also here in the auditorium. Um, all right, so the first thing is we'll do the, the chair farewell and welcome. So um, the first speaker that is going to talk is going to be Andrew Kong, and we can go to, we can go to the other screen. Okay, so, uh, well, it's kind of great pleasure to be the first to say thank you and farewell to our six-year chair, Rajesh Gupta. Um, most of you know me as a kind of keep your head down, do your work, uh, know your limits, uh, stay behind the scenes kind of person. And it's really because I know my limits so well that right after arriving at UCSD, um, 16 years ago, I set about recruiting a colleague who would actually really accomplish the things that I think people hoped that I would do or be able to do, but which I knew I would never be able to accomplish. And that person was Rajesh, and it took about two years to get him to come here. Um, this slide is 15 years old. Okay, so. This is part of what I presented to our CSE faculty in October 2001 in making the case to hire Rajesh, who was at that time simply a different kind of academic beast. Um, this is, this is uh, my summary bullet. Um, star quality. Uh, next step for CSE and CE. Build systems to test out ideas. Personality, leads by example, altruistic, brings together, gets things done. Energy and vision, big pictures, projects, thinking. So creating a moxie center, leading an expedition, overseeing the hiring of well over a quarter of our department, um, presiding over enormous growth in our student populations at the master's and undergraduate levels, initiating a building rec you know, re renovation, mentoring folks such as Yuvraj or Michael or Ryan. Um, I think all of these things have really forever changed how we think and who we are. And of course, uh, anyone who knows Rajesh knows him as a very complex and cultured person, very empathic, uh, dedicated parent and colleague, um, great friend to anyone who needs a friend. And so it's really a joy to be able to say that personally, my best contribution to UCSD so far and, you know, uh, and what will always be my best contribution is having helped to bring Rajesh here 15 years ago. So thank you, Rajesh, for being our chair. And here's to 15 more years at least. Uh, so the next person to be Lawrence Saul. No slides. Okay. Uh, so I uh, started working closely with Rajesh about three years ago when he recruited me to be a, a vice chair of academic personnel, which means I help him put together the files for promotion um, of every uh, faculty member uh, in the department um, uh, to go through uh, the higher processes of the university. 
And I want to thank him really uh, personally, but really on behalf of all the faculty. Um, I've seen him in the role as sort of advocate in chief, not for the department as a whole, but for all of its individual members to see that all their achievements get the recognition they deserve. Um, he's been fierce and tireless. And um, sometimes, you know, we have charged into battles uphill against the wind, against superior firepower. Um, and he never, he never flinched from any of those battles. Uh, as, par as, as, part of, as part of that whole process, every year the chair has to produce a letter um, for everybody who's up for a promotion. And um, so that's, you know, 20 or 30 letters uh, often that have to get done in, in the space of one or two months that are the equivalent of you know, why this person deserves tenure or a promotion. And um, I remember reading the, the first of these letters that I, that I saw him do because he would ask me to look them over. And this might have been for somebody in the architecture or CAD group. And I was like, wow, this is extremely detailed letter. It's even more detailed than the, the one produced by the, the committee of colleagues that are evaluating the work. And I thought, well, these are areas close to Rajesh's heart. Um, he knows them well. So it would make sense that he would really um, be able to provide a lot of details. And then over the, over the course of the job, I got to see the letters he would write for people in you know, other areas of the department, databases, programming languages, theory. And I, wow, Rajesh really knows a lot about all these areas. I was incredibly surprised. And then I, I thought, well, maybe I just don't know very much about these areas. And, and, and he's just uh, he's pulling one over on me and the rest of the, of the university. Um, <laughs> But then I got to some of the letters he was writing for people in machine learning, which is my area. And again, I was like, wow, I'm learning things about my own field and how the different conferences rank and the sort of subtle contributions of my colleagues that I hadn't appreciated before. Um, so he, he always went the extra mile, um, not, even, not just in terms of under, understanding how the processes work, but in understanding understanding all of the achievements of the faculty's department and making sure that recognized. So for being our a tireless advocate in chief uh, on behalf of the whole department. I really want to thank Rajesh for his service. All right, the next person is Joe. Well, I just want to reflect on a few things that uh, um, I've worked on with Rajesh, have had the pleasure over the six years of his chairmanship to uh, work on various projects. Um, one of the things that we do each year is a faculty retreat, and there are a few other things. Um, and I remember the first time uh, Rajesh asked me um, to run our retreat, um, I was kind of shocked because um, as a chair, he didn't ask the magic question, which is, uh, how much is it going to cost? Uh, in fact, he never gave me a budget. He just said, um, Joe, do what is best for the faculty. Whatever it needs, we'll do it. Uh, this has been the pattern. Um, I'm also involved with uh, our alumni board. The alumni hold a number of events for our students, do all kinds of stuff. And again, no budget. Um, do what is best for the alumni. Do what is best for our students. I think that that is a big reason why we've, uh, with all the many other reasons mentioned by the, uh, uh, by the other speakers, for why we've uh, succeeded and gotten to where we are today um, we're a top department in no small part because of uh, Rajesh and his attitude. Um, so thank you, Rajesh. Thank you on behalf of everyone for what you've done. We, uh, we are doing well. Uh, like any top department, we still have some challenges. Um, and I know that uh, our incoming chair, Dean, um, we're in good hands with Dean. So uh, thanks, Rajesh, for your service. And thank you, Dean, for stepping up and uh, taking the baton. So the next person is Christine Alvarado. Hi, 
uh, I've been here a relatively short period of time. I came here four years ago, so Rajesh is the only chair I've known here at UCSD. And I came here from a job at Harvey Mudd College, where, as you know, it's a very undergraduate education-focused institution. And I had no plans to leave Harvey Mudd. And I said if I did leave Harvey Mudd, it had to be to a place that really cared deeply about undergraduate education. And that's the department that I found here at UCSD, in large part because of Rajesh's leadership. Uh, I've been working closely with Rajesh for the last couple of years as the vice chair for undergraduate education. And what's really struck me about Rajesh and his leadership is, first of all, in the face of an extremely challenging environment, we've gone from, I think, slightly under 1,000 undergraduate majors to well over 2,000, pushing 3,000 undergraduate majors in just a few years is that Rajesh cares deeply about not just the education program in the abstract, but about each and every one of the students. Uh, you know, he gets distraught when students struggle to get into their classes. It, it pains him personally that our students are having trouble getting into classes, that their ec educational experience is somehow suboptimal, and he works tire tirelessly to make it a better place and a better learning environment for everybody, for all of our students, for our faculty, for our staff. So thank you, Rajesh. Okay, the next person is Soren Lerner. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. okay. Um, so did you know that um, Rajesh has a running desk in his office. This is this is the you know you know these things right? you know what I'm talking about. This is like there's a treadmill and there's a desk right, um, and um, so it's the kind of things you're not you don't think would go together, but they they somehow put them together. And um, once I was in his office and uh, he asked me to do something and I said no, and he said that's it go on the treadmill for 15 minutes, and I was like what. I didn't realize that's what happened when people said no. And they, so, so he said, you can't get off until you say yes. Um, gives a new meaning to making someone sweat. Actually, I'm totally kidding. That, that did not happen. That totally did not happen. The, my problem is I, I, I always said yes. Um, so joking aside, um, Rajesh oversaw our department at a time of unprecedented growth. Um, there are huge challenges with such demand and growth. Um, and whose solutions are only beginning to emerge. Uh, but these were and are good times. CS is at the forefront of interest and attention, and our department is doing really well. Rajesh has spearheaded a massive $5 million renovation, the one that's going on outside at this very moment, uh, that will dramatically um, improve the first floor and basement of the building. Uh, he also initiated and is supporting many, many other smaller renovations, including the uh, creation of the MS Commons uh, and the remodeling of many lab spaces um, in, the, in the building. Uh, he oversaw the department as it received an $18.5 million donation from an anonymous donor and a $2 million donation that will support an endowed um, teaching chair. We have just finished uh, a series of very successful uh, faculty recruiting seasons, and under his leadership, our department has continued to do very well in the U.S. News and World Report rankings. And all while doing this, Rajesh had to deal with difficult negotiations with the administration and promote our cause to the campus. Already that is like, that level of doing all that stuff is making me anxious. But on top of this, on top of all of this, okay, he led a $10 million expeditions, NSF expeditions grant, kept teaching and kept an extremely active research agenda. It's hard, to be quite honest, it's hard to fathom the magnitude of this insanely Herculean juggling task. And for, the, for taking this task to heart the way you did, Rajesh, we are all extremely, extremely grateful. As I close, there's a quote that comes to mind. The best way to predict the future is to create it. I think this embodies Rajesh in many ways. He creates an ambitious vision of the future and steers us steadfastly toward it. Thank you, Rajesh, for pushing the department um, forward into the future. And finally, to Dean, um, our next chair, um, thank you for taking this role. Uh, you have big shoes to fill. I'm not gonna say much here because we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it for when <laughs> at the end of your chairmanship. Um, <laughs> okay, so with that, um, I'm gonna give the podium to Rajesh, who's gonna say a few words, and then we're gonna pass it on to, uh, to Dean. Thank you. 
What can I say? If there was a reminder that I'm stepping down, this is a good one. Let me say, let me share with you something. I received an email last week and I'm going to print, just read it to you a bit of it. It was an alumnus of ours and he says, Rajesh, I want to thank you for taking a risk on a kid from El Cajon. I was a kid from a broken home who was always bored in high school. UCSD took a chance on me. I now complete my tenure as a full professor, step nine, in the University of California. Rick Ward, Rick is there. Rick will give away as bride, like the fathers do, later this year, to a very well received, and very pretty, I might say, engineer at Google, who more than 10 years ago showed up as a pregnant, divorced, young mother with a kid holding her finger and nowhere to go. 10 years later, we don't just teach here. We don't just give degrees out. We make lives individual and societal. That's what we do. We are the access. We are the opportunity. We are the ones who carry the society along. <clears throat> Every chair is defined by sometimes the time that they begin. I was no different. I walked into a chairship in a department in 2010, facing deep cuts, layoffs. You might remember furloughs. When the chairs got together with the EVC on their meetings, you earned your stripes and your attention by coming up with ideas on how to save money. Oh, we shouldn't have copiers or printers, printing papers, people can bring their papers. And telephones, who needs them? Maybe we can share them. Those were the currency of conversation when I became a chair. My intuition was to do exactly the opposite. I came back to the department and said, let's just start a coffee every day. It's a small amount, doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do it. And forget about saving paper or ink. I mean, you should save them for trees. But, <laughs> um, and let's expand the tutor program, which was not budgeted. Expand the TA program. That, of course, requires guts, potentially recklessness with budget. But more importantly, it required luck and knowing where we are going. As I look back, I couldn't always see what the future, how will I get there? I knew where I wanted to get. And I look back, things fell into place beautifully. How? We launched activities, for example, we launched an MAS program when the campus was asleep. And within a year, year and a half, the program was making half a million dollars. That gave me a room. You can buy a lot of paper and a lot of coffee with half a million dollars. But more importantly, it validated the intuition I had to grow. It gave us a room to grow. But then, the campus budgeting was a mess. I think it's better now, but not much better. And, and we, as chairs, got very frustrated. So what this department doesn't know, a very small group of people got together and we created a council of chairs. It doesn't exist. It didn't exist at the time. And it was more of a place of just exchanging ideas. But within a year, it was actually having a voice. And it became a platform for model changes that actually had a very long-term impact on the department. 
For example, sharing revenue on master's growth, sharing revenue on uneven income returns. So when I look back, number of initiatives, precision medicine, contextual robotics, um, data sciences program, MES program, they were all looking in one direction of doing something new. 2011 and 12 was a very depressing year. Why? First of all, very important faculty members actually left. We had departure of Jason Mars, Lingja, uh, I mean, Vadad, Varghese, I mean, you can count. Uh, the, 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 the message I would write to the administration that our enrollments are increasing would not get any hearing because honestly nobody was feeling the pain yet. It was to come. And out of that depression, I sat down with uh, Lisa French from development and we charted a campaign, Inspiring Imagination. And over time, that campaign really got people to think about what computer science had done, could do. And we came to the point where actually our fundraising was, um, was doing well by 2014, 2013. And I thought by 2014 everything was great and hunky-dory, everything is going okay. Just when we started to manage and wrestled with the, with the campus on faculty slots and so on, the wheels started coming out of the departmental administration. I remember in 2014 thinking, oh my God, full three out of four senior managers were either out or sick or retiring or something happening. Of course, we had MSO who was also in and out of hospitals and, and into a terminal ad, uh, illness. So the challenges never stopped coming. And that brings me to today. We have new MSO. We have a staff growth that is completely projected. Can you believe it? After that much of growth, the staff was, which was flatline and was stepping in to take a lot of work, is finally going to be increasing 30% from 21 to 32. So today, we are bold uh, for doing things that would be considered reckless in another time. We are very confident about the future. And above all, we are very resourceful. This will not last. The interest we have in our classes, the interest we have, every single chair of a department on this campus has come by the chair of the CSC department in an attempt to form some program or some course together. Political science, cognitive science, psychology, you pick up any department. We are the center of attention when it comes to our classes. The students want to come in our classes and they want to learn that material even if they're not getting our degree. Can you believe it? The interest is high. But you know, it should make us humble. It should make us that we have been given an extraordinary responsibility are actually being able to take our discipline, move it forward in areas, in ways in which it will impact others. And we have to ensure that the research focus stays and is strong. And the research focus means being able to create new initiatives, being able to create new programs, being able to launch new programs. We also have to have student-centeredness which I hope this remodeling will do that. It will start to exteriorize and build the entire student population, the undergraduates, the graduates, the masters, they all work together. But above all, I know we will do well. We have hired tremendous faculty. You will have anywhere from seven to nine new faces come fall. That's a tremendous growth. But we have to remain accessible. And that's the part that I caution you. Despite our impulse to say no to the campus, to, to the students, uh, go away, don't come in our classes and so on, I think we should be open. We should find ways to scale operations that will sustain. I think we have done it. 
if you go and take a look at the master's uh, common area, which is just getting populated now, you will see we have done it in a tasteful manner, where we can supervise the students, we can run programs. Things can be changed. In fact, the academic senate has come to help us change the rules if necessary to make sure it will scale. I think this is the best way we can make an impact. This is the best way we make impact through the people. You through, go through the building, you see pictures of people, much more so than the artifacts, because that's our product. So let's stay focused. It's stay human. The people who are trying to be in our classes, they are real people. And much more importantly, be inclusive. Now, I would love to take the credit for all of that, but it really has been such a huge team effort. Uh, Lawrence has been on the back, setting up the committees, prodding the committees. What he didn't tell you is the amount of work it takes that I don't even read those emails, I don't even get there, is just to get those letters out. Of course, I write letters, and I'm now I have written letters for every single faculty member in the department, many of them twice, maybe sometimes three times. So technically, I know what you do at 40,000 feet level, probably better than most other uh, on the campus. But this could not have happened without Christine as vice chair, actually with Dean as, as uh, vice chair was in the same role as, as, uh, as uh, Lawrence. So I am so happy to see a new set of leadership emerge in the department. And probably there is no better person to take that now than Dean Tulson. So Dean, I heartily welcome you to a role. I'm sure you will enjoy it. And, um, and definitely keep the treadmill, stay on it. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me the confidence and your trust. I hope I have uh, got to the point where it has returned. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, OK, so the idea of uh, taking over as chair for one of the great computer science departments in the world, uh, it, when I think about that, it, it, I'm honored, um, humbled, and, uh, and a bit trepidatious, uh, to be honest. Uh, when I think about taking over for, uh, as chair for, for Rajesh Gupta and following in his footsteps, I am honored, humbled, humbled and quite a bit trepidatious. Um, it, but, but mostly this is the end of the year barbecue. It's about looking back. And, and mostly I, 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 I want to talk about Rajesh here. Um, uh, there will never be another chair like Rajesh Gupta. I, I, I want people to understand that right now. Um, <laughs> just, just get that out there. Uh, uh, Rajesh has been amazing. I, I don't think Given where we are right now as a department, and there's still some big challenges, but given where we are right now, it's hard to look back and understand where we were when Rajesh took over. We had this huge challenges. Most of those were financial challenges, uh, just the, the economy and what they were asking us to do. Um, and people have touched on this in, in several dimensions. There are so many dimensions uh, that, that, I, that I think are important to understand, and one of, one of them that that, that really is important to me is, is understanding what the department was really asked to do, particularly in terms of, of, of cutting expenses and really cutting people, uh, and, and the things we, we didn't do that we really were supposed to do. Um, and and the, one of the jewels of this department is the staff and the high quality of staff and the great people we have and the people that some of whom should have been let go, but 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 we refuse to do, and 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 they're still here and are still part of the reason this is this is a great department, and that's you know one of the things I think is just enduring in in, in terms of uh, uh, what Rajesh did, in the, in the terms of the, the the way he managed to keep us um, afloat when things were so difficult, um, and uh, uh, and and so Rajesh, we appreciate what you've done. Um, the, the things that, that, that you have done will continue to, to uh, long past your tenure, will continue to have a, a huge impact on 
uh, this department and uh, what a great department it is. Uh, so I am uh, uh, excited and nervous about uh, uh, moving forward. I keep trying to remind people that I'm not chair until July 1st. That has not been working out very well. Um, but, uh, but, but again, thank you, Rajesh, for everything that you've done. And uh, in, enjoy the bar barbecue and the rest of the program. All right, thank you all for a, a heartwarming, heartwarming farewell to, to Rajesh um, and a welcome to, to Dean. Um, so now the next, uh, the next thing we have in our outline is the student awards. Cue the spotlights. <laughs> Whoa, did you see that? Did you see the light on us? Awesome, okay. So as last year, we're gonna have awards for research, teaching, service, and contributions to diversity, each at the undergraduate and the graduate level. Uh, we had so many fantastic nominations that it was really hard to select a winner in each category, but in the end, we did it um, in most cases. In some very rare cases where it, um, there was, um, there was, there was a tie, we actually are gonna give two awards, and in some cases, a few honorable mentions. So without further ado, let's start with a graduate award for research, which goes to, oh, wait, 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 hold on, oh, sorry, sorry, let me, let, me just, let me just tell you procedurally how this is gonna work. So I'm sorry, procedurally. I announce your name, you come down. As, you're, as I'm gonna read some few words about you, you come down and you, 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 you come center stage. We're gonna, we're gonna get, after I'm done, I'm gonna give you the award, pose for a picture, and then you stay on stage until the very, very end where we're gonna take a group picture with everybody, okay? Sorry, I, I had to get that off sorry, my chest, okay. Okay, so let's start, okay, so Graduate Award for Research goes to David Kohlbrenner. David works with his advisor, Hovav Shaham, on system security. Since returning from leave working at a startup, David has defined his own extremely promising research agenda, studying the architectural underpinnings of system security. Together with Mark Andrisco and Keaton Mowry, uh, David published a highly rated paper at Oakland 2015 showing a stunning result, which is that timing variability and floating point instructions, depending on operand values, can actually be used to break the security of real-world software, including the Firefox browser. Uh, using Security 2016 will feature papers from two groups directly following up on these findings. More recently, David has turned to building a browser that resists timing attacks. A paper describing preliminary um, design was accepted to use Security 2016. And finally, David also runs the Capture the Flag competitive security team at UCSD. That went flawlessly. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep the envelopes maybe for later, uh, for after I give them and take the picture. There's too many things to hold, okay, sorry. Okay, the graduate award for teaching goes to Aviv Kiss. Aviva has created Python-based educational software for cryptography that was deployed with enormous success in CSC 107 in winter 2016. In this class, students learn abstract security definitions and need to write attacks. Aviva's system allows them to actually write the attacks in code and run them to see how well they do. Prior to this, the concepts were taught in a classical style with handwritten assignments, and there were lots of mistakes, lots of confusion, and no way to get feedback before something was graded. All that changed with Aviva's system. The quarter in which the system was deployed saw a very sizable jump in student learning and success in the class. The tools he created have great potential for use in future years, years at UCSD and at other institutions. Furthermore, even putting aside the tool, Aviv was an excellent and well-liked TA, putting in huge amounts of time and effort and genuinely concerned with student learning and feelings. His TA ratings on CAPES were indeed spectacular. In summary, this is not just excellence in teaching, but excellence in teaching combined with the creation of, of innovative educational tools and software to support excellence in teaching for years to come. <laughs> you gotta take the pictures, okay.
The graduate award for service goes to Karen Benson. Karen's tireless efforts at building and nurturing our graduate community are truly impressive. She has been organizing social hours for several years, and in that role, she inspired many offices to take the lead in running creative and fun social hours. By getting many students excited again, she brought back diversity and persistence to social hour. This, ab this ability to, um, to inspire involvement from our graduate students has a multiplicative effect and exemplifies community leadership in its truest form. Karen has also been involved in, in, with Visit Day, ran the CSC Running Club, and was a grad week publicity manager, in which role she got a lot more people to join the meetings. Okay, so for the graduate, so um, for the graduate award for uh, diversity, we had two people who did a fantastic job together, and so we actually will give two awards. Um, so the graduate award for contributions to diversity jointly goes to <laughs> Ailey Fraser and Yasmin Koturi. This past year, Ailey um, was president of Gradwick, uh, the graduate chapter of the Women in Computing Group, and Yasmin Kotri was its vice president. Together, Ailey and Yasmin have been very active at promoting diversity. In addition to running Gradwick and promoting events that others across campus organize, Ailey and Yasmin have organized several successful events of their own, including several Gradwick pizza beer happy hours, an unconscious bias panel that was very well received, and the Gradwick trivia social hour. Through these activities and their utmost dedication, Ailey and Yasmin have truly raised awareness to diversity issues. Okay, I think that's it for the graduate award. So now we move on to the undergraduate award. And um, Christine Alvarado is going to give those out. All right, it's my pleasure to announce the undergraduate awards in the same categories. Starting with the undergraduate award for research. Uh, the award winner is actually a joint award to two people doing joint research. So the undergraduate award for research goes to, same drum roll, Maya Nayapati and Asha Kemper Singh. So, Asha and Maya worked together doing security analysis of secure messaging apps, specifically WhatsApp secure messaging system. This is now in use by one billion people, and, but its security is not understood. Maya and Asha first created a precise cryptographic description of the protocol based on WhatsApp's documentation. Then they created abstractions and security definitions to model the goals and the framework of modern cryptography and are now working on finding attacks and giving security proofs. Their advisor, Mahir Bilari, said they both showed remarkable initiative and intellectual strength. As undergraduates with only one undergraduate cryptography class, CSE 107, for training, they are functioning at the level of good PhD students. In terms of initiative, work quality, and ideas, they are ahead of many PhD students. They taught themselves advanced graduate material, and they are writing a full paper for submission in the near future. Congratulations, Maya and Asha. Yes, that is harder than it looks. Um, the next is we actually had so many great uh, um, nominees for the Undergraduate Research Award that we couldn't just award the award, and we even gave the award to two people, but we also have two honorable mentions in that category. Uh, so the honorable mentions for our Undergraduate Award to Research go to 
Bryce Woodworth and Jorge Pacheco. All right, so Jorge. Jorge has been a leader on two important research projects for the Engineers for Exploration project led by Ryan Kastner. The first is the Intelligent Camera Trap, which aims to make a more advanced camera trap for ecological monitoring. Over the summer, he worked in a group that created a new revision of the camera trap that used multiple low-cost cameras. The group was able to perform low energy tracking across the camera array. This academic year, he took the lead on a project to visualize aerial image information, in particular thermal imagery. His team created a software package that was able to interface with the thermal camera, sync it with normal visible light camera, and visualize the results. The system was just recently deployed in Belize as part of a National Geographic project to determine the existence of the harpy eagle in the jungles of Belize. So I'll do this and I'll come back and talk about that. It looks like Bryce wasn't able to join us, but let me just say a couple words about Bryce. Bryce performed research for Sanjay Dasgupta. He took, adva he took advanced math and CS courses to support his work and was the only non-PhD student in Sanjay's seminar on embeddings this quarter. That would be pretty intimidating. Sanjay writes, I have been very impressed by his level of skill, dedication, and professionalism. His work will lead to a good publication sometime in the fall. So congratulations to Bryce. Okay, moving on to the Undergraduate Award for Teaching. The Undergraduate Award for Teaching goes to Casey Espinosa. <laughs> Casey has been a tireless tutor in the department and has tutored for a wide variety of courses and goes far beyond the expectations to dedicate his time and effort to help the students in our courses learn. As one example, he was tutor for Jeff Volker and YYZO in the fall of 2015, and he volunteered to serve as a tutor for both of their sections. They had separate Piazza pages, and Casey signed up for both and answered more questions than any of the very excellent graduate TAs. <laughs> Casey also spent countless hours in the basement labs helping students in person across both sections. On his own initiative, he also scheduled study sessions for midterms and finals, final exams. Indeed, anyone who has had Casey in their course also knows that as a student, Casey's one of the strongest tutors in the course. When he took my CSE 8B course, he was the top Piazza contributor with 798 contributions. Just to put this in perspective, the next uh, top contributor was me with 406. <laughs> so congratulations, Casey. All right, the Undergraduate Award for Service goes to Eric Fakarian. <laughs> Eric is recognized for going above and beyond to support the smooth delivery of our undergraduate courses. Gary Gillespie writes, Eric is disciplined and organized in his own coursework so he can dedicate uninterrupted time to my courses, tutors, and students. He takes ownership of all he does, executes large tasks and small with purpose, enthusiasm, and a positive attitude. And once done, he's eager to do more. Week after week, he can often be found working late into the evening, enhancing and streamlining procedural aspects of the course administration such that I can more effectively spend my time educating students. He responds to most email messages within 10 minutes, day or night. Service like this often slides under the radar, but it is often what makes or breaks the educational experience for the students in our classes. So thank you, Eric, for your dedication and service to the department and the students. <laughs> All right, and the last award, uh, actually two more awards. So this one is Undergraduate Award for Contributions to Diversity. All right, and it goes to Shaheem Jackson Burgess. Shai's contribution to diversity are wide ranging and prominent. He has been strongly involved in the National Society of, for Black Engineers uh, chapter here at UCSD, serving as its president this year and its finance chair for the two previous years. 
Through these leadership positions, he has organized tech talks here on campus, as well as enabled Nesby members to attend the Nesby National Conference in Boston. Through his work with Nesby, he has also organized and helped run a number of K through 12 outreach events to help inspire and increase, inspire and increase the diversity in future classes of C CSE and engineering students at UCSD and elsewhere. The number of events he has organized and led is truly impressive for someone so young. And we know that he'll continue to be a force in empowering and inspiring people from all backgrounds to study CS and engineering. Talking to Shai, it's hard not to be inspired. Congratulations. <laughs> I also want to uh, point out that Shai is also the recipient of the, is it the Student of the Year Award at the Jacobs School Ring Ceremony. <laughs> All right. And speaking of the Jacobs School Ring Ceremony, we have our uh, Department Excellence Awards that will be awarded at that ceremony. But since most of us won't be at that ceremony, we want to recognize our two Department Excellence Award winners here. And they are? Huang Li and Sandra Hui. All right. Sandra and Huang are both all around fantastic students. They were both in my CSE 8A class and finished the class as numbers one and two. <laughs> They've contrib continued to excel equally in and out of the classroom since then. They both currently have a 3.93 GPA, both of them. And they've both been head tutors for several quarters, and they have both participated in research, and have both held leadership positions in the department organizations. Really, they're kind of indistinguishable. <laughs> so now you can see why we couldn't just choose one of them to receive the Department Excellence Award. They will receive their official award at the ring ceremony next weekend, but we wanted to recognize them here as well. So congratulations to Wong and Sandra. Hold on, that's it. So, okay, so that's it for the, the, the oh, hold on, this is a complicated process. That's it for the graduate awards and the undergraduate awards and the, um, the excellence awards, but now we have one more award, and that's the best social hour award that is run by the students. So can you, uh, who's gonna do that? Val, okay, so there's a vote. So there was a vote that, uh, for the best social hour, and, uh, and Val's gonna present the results of that vote. unprepared speech. Um, so as usual, almost every Friday of the year we've had uh, social hours and this year has been great participation uh, from many students. And so we would like to keep this going. So for the coming year, uh, please come up with ideas, come talk to, I guess not Karen anymore because she's going to retire from this, but some of us will keep organizing and it would be great to have more people who want to participate either in organizing it or organizing one particular social hour. Um. All right, so we have an award for the runner up and the winner. So the winner is the Viceroy of Social Hour and the runner up is the Arjun Roy of Social Hour. Um, so the Arjun Roy of Social Hour um, this person had come to one social hour ever and then ran the second social hour we had this year, which is really impressive. And it was great to have a new idea. Um, so that's Peter Edge for Squirt Gun Assassins. Is Peter here? Well, he will have to get his award later. All right. And the winner, um, this is actually a lot of people helped with this social hour. Um, but we are going to give the award to Dustin Richmond for going to the University of Washington Social Hour and saying, we need to do this here. 
Um, so this was the lock picking social hour. So congratulations, Dustin, for stealing from you, Dove. <laughs>